Hello, Empire Builders. This is Anthony Metivier and Jonathan Levy from BrandonU.academy. We're going to talk about something that a lot of people don't think exists, but does, and that is a formula for creating multi-million dollar information products. And so, Jonathan, you have done very, very well in this space. What is the main ingredient to a formula for making a multi-million dollar product in your experience? Yeah, you know, I, I wondered the same thing. And, and I want to give a little background to impress upon people that I, I didn't know this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, I had failed at a startup idea that I had while I was in business school. I was working on it. And I'd only taken one online course ever. And I thought this is a really cool idea. I could do this as a side project. What I did have is the stuff that I, I teach, learning and memory skills. And I, I went and I learned everything that I'm about to share today. I, I opened up a bunch of tabs, took me you know, a week to learn and three weeks to produce the course. And I, I just went out and, and the information's out there. There's books, there's blogs, there's podcasts, uh, there's this now. And I right. aggregated and then, you know, of course, you add and you adapt and you change things. But that that was the question that I really started out with uh, when it came to specifically the topic of, of today's episode, which is online courses. Now, online courses are important for a lot of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, I think they're the highest value product because people can see visuals, unlike a podcast or an audio book. They're willing to pay more because it's interactive. There's activity and they're willing, they're able really to learn more because it is interactive. There's worksheets, there's exercises if you do it right. So you know, an online course can sell for 10 to 100 to even a thousand times what your book will sell for or what you can make per person on, on ad revenue. And at the same time, the user gets better results and they're more committed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really gung ho on online courses. I'm sure in another episode, we'll talk about the limitations because there are some limitations around online courses that I'm now fully discovering how to overcome. Um, Here's where I think people go wrong as just a springboard for online course discussion. And, and I've given versions of this talk that we're going to talk about today at, at Genius Network, the $25,000 a year mastermind, and people raved about it. And, and so folks here are going to get a 45-minute version. So imagine the value uh, you know, if you take notes and, and diligently apply. I think where most people go wrong is that they assume that the value of their online course is the knowledge or the information, right? But it's not because you and I both know better than anyone, Anthony, you can learn anything for free on YouTube right now. For example, you and I, we love to teach memory. We use memory. We practice it. We've never won a world championship. But if you go mm. online right now, you have Nelson Dellis and Ron White and all these other champions teaching this stuff for free, teaching right. their techniques, sharing. And, and that's great. I'm in favor of that. It's fantastic. More knowledge to the people. So why then, if someone can learn something for free online, why would they pay 10, 100, 1,000, in some cases, even $5,000 for an online course? And it, it breaks down to a couple things. First off, it's not the information, it's the curation, right? right? So people come to you to take the guesswork out of the learning experience. They want you to curate exactly what they need to learn in the exact order so that they don't have to think. Because let's face it, learning something difficult, whether it's a language or it's starting a business or it's learning how to master memory techniques, it's hard enough without going, is this the right thing for me right now? You know, is, is the way that I'm learning it detrimental to me because I'm learning things in the wrong order? It's just gonna confuse me. So they want that curation. I, I call this whole process of creating that, and I've trademarked this, it's a curated learning journey. Right? Imagine if you were to take a child to a museum, not a children's museum, but just any museum, you would not set them off in the museum and say, I'll see you in three hours. You would walk mm -hmm. them step by step. And not only would you take them to the right exhibits in the right order so they could understand the progression of the subject, but you would also check in with them from time to time. You would mm -hmm. ask them questions. You would engage them. And what you would do when I say curated learning journey, it means designing the optimal experience for the learner to get the results because that's so, the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of questions and, you know, stopping people and checking in, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know we're going to devote future episodes for, for this precise purpose, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are going to hear this sort of curated journey and the correct order, and that's going to trigger analysis paralysis. And then they're going to wonder, yes. well, you know, how do I know this the first time? So again, I know we're going to cover that in. Yeah, yeah. Well, episodes, uh, well but... I have a method and I will share and bear all. Um, right, okay. And, and, and I guess if people are wondering, why should I listen to Jonathan? Well, first off, check me, you know, go out and read the books and read the research papers as I have and, and, and reason from first principles. But also, I don't think many people in the world can claim to have over 300,000 paid enrollments in online courses and, right. and leave the money aside that, you know, we've done many millions of dollars in online course sales, but we have very high completion rates for people who actually start our courses. And we've done again, almost 300,000 paid enrollments. Uh, right, right. And we've learned a lot, right? Like I didn't know all of this from one weekend of research. We've also learned the hard way, the things that we were doing wrong, um, my team and I. So on the analysis paralysis step, there is definitely an element of, of done is better than perfect, right? You do your best guess. And then over time you realize, I'll give you a big example. In my course, I thought, let's do a little memory, get the, this was in the beginning, right? When I had never taught anyone this stuff, I had been taught, I'd mastered it myself and thought I could teach others. And I worked with someone who had taught others, my mentors, Anna and Lev. And I thought, let's do a bunch of memory. Then we'll get into the speed reading to keep their interest because people love speed reading. It's sexy. And then we'll go back and master the memory. And what I realized over time is speed reading is a, is a, it's a powerful tool, but it's nothing compared to the complete operating system. And, and you are part of this decision and, and this realization. It, upgrading your memory and transitioning to having a true photographic memory is a game changer. It's an operating system change. It's like switching out the motor in your diesel truck to a Tesla engine, right? Motor, mm -hmm. I guess you would say. And right. so I've made the memory parts of the course bigger and higher, and I rearranged the whole course over the time. So that is definitely going to happen. And, and one of the best things you can do in creating an online course is respond to feedback. There was a worksheet that people did not understand, even though we had in big red letters, this worksheet is not meant to test X, it's meant to test Y. And people weren't getting it and they were responding. Every week we get at least one question. Uh, and, and our goal in our programs is we view questions as failures. Because if you're paying me to be able to learn 24 seven asynchronous in your underwear, you know, and, and you wanna learn in your free time and you now have to stop what you're learning because you don't understand something, I failed at my job, right? I failed in creating the perfect curated learning journey. So over the course of 250,000 plus people going through just one of our, our super learner programs, we've repeatedly, repeatedly refined. And so what we did, you know, when the big red letters in that worksheet didn't work, I created a video and I demonstrated exactly how to do it. When people didn't understand a, a term, I literally demonstrated, I recorded my eyes moving and people can actually see how I, how I do things. So, um, this isn't to say you have to get it right the first time, but you have to understand that your goal is to give people the fastest path from A to B. They're not paying for the information. They're paying for the transformation. They're paying to get it as quickly as possible. In the same way, like, why would you hire a personal trainer? Go on YouTube, right? Go on YouTube. But it's, first off, it's accountability, right? But it's right. also having a system and process and taking the burden of the decision away the magic though, as you and I both know, because we study the brain and we study how adults learn, the magic secret sauce is leaving enough decision in so that the person doesn't feel disempowered. They feel engaged right. and they have agency over their learning experience, but taking away all decision that could lead to failure. So we do this in a lot of different ways. Uh, for example, giving people options of which homework to do. Right. Simple exercise, but it, it allows people to feel like they have choice. And when they have choice, they're able to learn more effectively, research has shown. Um, do you wanna hear a little bit about the process that I use for creating courses? We've, we've now done, I think, 20 different courses on all different, not only worked with other experts like yourself partnering, you know, 50-50, but I've also, I'm paid as a consultant to some of the world's top thought leaders to build courses with them. And, and through the process of that, I've created really an eight-step method. Um, and, it kind of goes like this. The first thing that we do is obviously creating the concept and the positioning, right? So we, we try to understand what are the, and I guess I could share this on screen. 
really, um, and, and show people a little bit of a walkthrough. And I, I always like to tell people when I quote on my consulting, I send out this brochure and I say, even if you don't hire me, do this because this alone is worth you know, the $25,000 I charge to build someone a course because it'll save you a lot of mistakes in re-recording because re-recording, redoing is expensive. Your most valuable asset is your time. And, and especially if in your early days, I mean, you and I both have recording studios as people see, but in, in the early days, I was paying like two, 3,000, you remember in Tel Aviv, we paid like $3,000 a day to rent a studio and hire sound engineers. And we did it on the cheap, but like three grand for eight hours of recording. So yeah. you better get it right your first time. So the first thing you want to do here is, is concept and positioning, right? So what are your goals and objective? What's the story that you're going to share? Uh, how is your product different? How are you going to brand it? How are you going to have different tiers and pricing? You know, really like what is this product going to be? Because you can't write it until you know what it's going to be. Mm. That usually takes one to two weeks. We then immediately, you'll notice often people come to me, the, the, my biggest pet peeve, and I share this with Tucker Max, who does what I do, but he does it for books, you know, helping you write your book. Tucker told me, he's like, if you're going to write a book with me, you come with zero words written. I do not, you know, you can have notes, you can have ideas. I do not want you to come and say, oh, I've already written this chapter. Like start clean slate. I cannot stress right. this enough because it's, it's, it will bias you. It will anchor you and you will, you will be subject to what I call lazy thinking, which is like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I already have this. That could fit in here. I don't want that. What I want is again, to come back to what is the absolute exact in, in as, as best as you can do perfect learning journey. So what we do is again, we, we create this curated learning journey, which takes people step by step by step. The reason or, or the method by which we do that is outlining. Okay. I don't allow my clients to write a single word, even if they're like, I'm super motivated to write this chapter right now, make notes. That's fine. Make notes about what you want to talk about, but do not start writing. What you want to do is you create an outline or a syllabus. Now, I could show people our, uh, our branding you syllabus. You know what? Why go sign up for our free trial at brandingu.academy and download the syllabus. And you will see that there is a very specific order. And even though that course was one of the hardest to come up with an order, because maybe people want to do a podcast first, maybe they want to do a book first, but we give them a specific order and a template. You know, and, and, and you can check out any one of my other courses as well. You can sign up, I think, for a free trial of my Super Learner course. At every step, what you're doing is you're creating sections and lectures that are then essentially creating a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Every lesson should build on the next lesson. And, and you know, the, uh, it's what uh, Paris Lampropolis, the famous copywriter, calls salted peanuts. You can't just eat one. So they watch a lecture, they, they keep going. And so at every single point, what I want people to think about is they create this outline. First off, lectures need to be two to 12 minutes, no more, no less, because people do not, uh, people are watching this on the bus. They're watching it, you know, while they wait for their kids to, to, you know, get dressed, whatever it is. And so 45 minute lectures don't help anyone. And they make it very hard for people to go back and review. Like how annoying is that? I, I want to get this one idea from Anthony and he has it in a 45 minute lecture. I'm not saying you actually do. So that's the second piece, oh, right? We got to play devil's advocate on that a little bit, but anyway. Yeah, please. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. Are, I think that what you're saying there is a bit of a demographic psychographic consideration, and you know your demographic mm -hmm. and psychographic very well. But there's a, another thing to consider, and I've just throw it in. It's not a right or wrong sort of thing, but I know that my 55 plus audience, they don't want to restart the engine again and again and again. And, mm -hmm. you know, insider Intel for you, <laughs> they often tell me that super learner course has too many short videos and I feel That's like fair. I have to restart again and again. So again, it's not a right or we wrong. We do know thing, our psychographic for sure. Right, right. My argument would be, you know, with autoplay set up, you can have ideas that take 45 to 50 minutes, but mm -hmm. perforate them, you know, in the right. same way that you can have a, a, 50 or 100 or 200 page chapter of a book, but give me section headings yeah. so that I know where to go. Um, essentially, at this point, I mean, it's, it's impossible to get it 100% right. But once I have people create the outline, I want a content lock. And the, mm -hmm. the reason, and there will be some changes here and there, but the reason is you cannot create a curated learning journey if you don't know the order of things and if you don't know right. what's going where. So you want to 
create it, sit on it, come back to it a week later and say, is this really, do I have anything else? Because once you start writing, you get into this confusing world of, I mentioned this term, but did I, did I already define this term in a previous lecture or did I not? You know, I, I start saying things like you already know about, but then I move this lecture around. You create a lot of problems for yourself. Um, so we do that. So in other uh, words, you don't want to have to remember your content. You want it well documented. You want it well, well, well documented. And I see far too many people go wrong here in that they just put together a bunch of cool ideas. And I've seen some courses that have big names. I'm talking like Robert Kiyosaki's coming in. And, and this person's idea was like, okay, you know, this is a course on wealth creation or whatever. Uh, and I won't name names, but like Robert Kiyosaki wrote the book. So let's have him come in. But Robert Kiyosaki is not synchronized with the 10 other speakers like Dean Graziosi. I mean, big names. Right. So there's no curriculum. It's just, here's a bunch of really interesting ideas that you should do. And I don't know what order to do them. And I don't mm -hmm. know how they contra, there's, there's contraindications. And I'm left, more con I, I'm left more confused and with more information than when I first started out. You right. want to avoid that. So even if and when you do bring in guest lecturers, and I do bring in guest lecturers, contextualize. You know, you and I have some more than one hour videos in each other's courses, and they go in the bonus section. And then I say, if you're curious about learning more about memory palaces, this is the time, again, creating decisions for people. This is the time to now veer off and create your own learning journey and come back to this section once you've watched the, the supplementary videos. So there's definitely right. ways to do that. Um, and, and make it add value instead of taking away from value. Right. So that's uh, a good then, point that yeah. something mm -hmm. about duration, because I certainly do have lots of short videos myself and yep. I've seen lots of good short videos done well, but it's more about the purpose of that particular piece of content yeah. as it fits in the map and the curated journey that you're creating or curated learning journey that you're yeah. creating for that, that individual who wants that outcome. Exactly. And, and also just to draw back to the first thing I said, like ideas are commodities, right? I'm actually mm -hmm. reading a book right now, Sacred Economics. I don't agree with everything. It's talking about how knowledge is part of the commons or should be part of the commons, right? It's like, right. And, and it is, but at the same time, you do want to create something that's proprietary, right? Like magnetic memory method is proprietary. And even though I, I think you'd be comfortable with me saying memory palaces have been around for 2,500 years. And there are a lot of people who teach what you and I teach in our programs. Mm -hmm. And yet super learner and magnetic memory method are more successful than nine tenths of the brands out there. Because first off, it's a proprietary method that people can latch onto and, and have a name, a handle by which right. you call it. But also the value of magnetic memory method is it's like, it's everything you need. It's not just this idea of memory palaces. It's like, do this, do this, do this. In my method, we work this way. And you and I once had a conversation about, you know, systems versus methods. A method is, a, is more adaptable. But at the end of the day, it is a method. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and you've thought out a comprehensive way, an operating mm -hmm. system that people can adopt and win the Canadian Memory Championship with your method. I don't know a lot of people who are, you know, just watching random YouTube videos and not sticking to a method or creating their own method and winning right. memory championships. So it's probably not going to happen. You know, we should flag <laughs> something for a future episode, but you know, you're right that not a lot of people are going to do something like that, whether it's win a Canadian memory championship or a world memory championship, they all have in common that they've read a book from beginning to end, or they yep. took a course from beginning to end. But I want to point out something that you mentioned too about how you and I have this sort of share of the market and we're doing more for people because of our curated yep. content than others. But we also need to talk at some point about 80-20 and sort of like yeah. Perry Marshall's fractal 80-20, you know, 80-20 inside of 80-20 and mm -hmm. so forth. Because a lot of people who, if they take what you're saying and really think through their courses, they're going to get some of that effect because it's yeah. so rare and unlikely that, competitors in the market are going to think through this like you're recommending. 100%. 100%. And, and, and I get made fun of in Genius Network. Like People joke about how I, I over-engineer the hell out of my courses. Uh, yeah. and, and there are people who, who spend a tenth of the time you right. know, on the courses. But we have customers coming back again and again and again and again. And my customers even, you know, we've done some affiliation promotions with other people. And they're like, yeah, their courses were good, better than most, but they weren't, they weren't superhuman academy courses. 
I don't think I would buy it again. Um, so I, I definitely over engineer the hell out of my courses, but there's a lot of reasons for that. One is pride, you know, pride of, of the product and, and really, as you and I have talked about in the past, I can't, and I market pretty hard, right? I go on and I tell people like, this is to my knowledge, the best damn learning course money can buy. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. So I need to believe it. And Joe Polish actually yesterday sent out an email about like the first marketing job you need to do is marketing to yourself. Like, mm -hmm. so there is this, you do need to be able to go, okay, this is as good as I can do right now. And I need to get this out to the market to get feedback. There is that element of MVP, but you also have to love your product and you have to love your customer enough to create a product that doesn't, that doesn't disappoint them. So, right. so it is, there is a balancing act and I'm not saying make the course perfect the first time, but I am saying a lot of the things that I do, one are about pride of product and being able to safely, confidently and proudly market but also I'm future proofing my courses and I'm engineering them in a way that, you know, the, the thing I want to, the next step in the process is scripting. Many people don't realize I script every word of my courses and you know, I, because I, I beat you over the head with this the first time we did a course together. I even script punctuation. I script, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, intonation. Right. So right. like if, if I need to take a pause and, and act out, I want to say something in a certain emotion, you never know how the teleprompter is going to cut. And, right. and I do this not because I don't know my shit. I know my shit. I do it because I can spend an hour drafting and crafting perfectly exactly the words that I think are going to get the point across. Whereas in, in this format, again, I, I, think, I think I'm providing a lot of value here, but it's different. It's, it's very mm -hmm. different to when I, when I'm, charting someone a thousand dollars it better be perfect so i script out every single word of my programs and except for some exceptions that you and i have done where it just didn't make sense for me, where it was a lot of visuals a lot of demonstration if i need to show people on screen how to set up their webinar i'm not going to script that right, right so right. they're there it's not absolutes none of these rules are absolutes but, but i would point out I, mm -hmm. another really um good thing about uh, the whole scripting exercise is that you get a lot, a lot better at free flowing exactly. conversation in the exactly. setting we're doing and just riffing on content because you now have trained yourself to actually create a flowing script. So, to yes. speak. so you can become more yes. scripted in everyday life. The way you write is the way you think. And when most people are starting out, they, and even look, I work with people who are on stages all over the world. I work with people who have best selling books and yet, getting in front of a camera does something weird to people. It just makes mm -hmm. people weird in a way that even an audience, if you are trained to speak to an audience, it's like you're used to getting that energy back and you're not. So scripting allows me, especially scripting out the emotions when I work with my consulting clients, allows me to ensure that we're getting the right thing. You know, like, is, is this a, a great example? Oxford comma, right? Like, by designing your courses this way, they're going to be more valuable, more informative, and more successful but if you don't have the oxford comma you're gonna say more valuable more informative uh oh and right, more right. successful so it's these little tiny things that people think you know you're obsessive but they save you a ton of time let me give you another example my lecture scripts have been turned into books have been turned into subtitles have been turned into podcast episodes and think about this i redo my courses periodically as new information and research comes out now what's easier for me and my team to watch the lecture, take notes about all the things that I want to change and then, you know, script it for the first time for V2 or try and remember and, and just freestyle. Or mm -hmm. I just open up the lecture scripts that I wrote two or three years ago and I highlight and I say, that's not true anymore. And I say, you know, write a new sentence. I was able in two weeks to redo one of my thousand dollar courses. It was like, took me three or four days of reading through and editing. And then I was mm -hmm. in the studio for a day and it's mm -hmm. like, you save time, you save money, and you look better, you know? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think scripting is the way to go for most things. Again, if you are teaching uh, many different topics that involve people needing to see your screen, different ballgame. And that's why a lot of branding you uh, was not scripted. And also, if, if you're working with someone else and you have a good energy like you and I do, we didn't script, but we outlined religiously. Like right. there was not a point that came up in that course that was not planned. Again, that comes back to this curated learning journey. 
like it's cool if you're going to riff, but if you then all of a sudden go, Oh, and that reminds me this, this point that I had earlier, which is by the way, what I just did. It's like, Oh, that comes back to the point of outlining, you know, this is, that's cool for this medium. It's not cool when someone's paying a thousand dollars, like you, you better, you better be curating. You, you better give them an amazing learning experience because they could have had it for free. Um, any, any questions on that? I'm kind of dominating the, uh, the airwaves here. Not at all. I would just reassert this because I feel very fortunate before I ever made my first video course, I had been a lecturer for a number of years and, you know, was trained somewhat yeah. in university to actually create a syllabus yes. for a course. And then I was very well versed in creating notes for lectures. And another thing I would just add is James Lavers. I remember sitting with you driving from Jerusalem back to uh, mm -hmm. Tel Aviv, listening to his guru maker. And I had gone to get coaching from him to be better on camera, still far, far from as good as I'd like to be. But nonetheless, I really loved investing in that. And he told me, he said, yeah, it's great, man. You can memorize your scripts, but you look like you're reciting from your memory. And he said, just get a teleprompter and perform, yeah. learn to deliver. And that's where, you exactly. know, Oxford commas, I would agree, are very, very useful exactly. because you want to then focus on your performance and you, you want to be aware of your content, but you need to be able to yeah. actually deliver. Well, and I've had a, an interesting experience with some consulting clients who, at, you raised the point, you know, you were lucky that you had the lecturing experience, standing in front of people and talking, also the experience of preparing the notes and creating the curriculum. I've had a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say issues. One of the challenges when I consult people is working with folks who are, I call them spoiled, lovingly, who have been doing workshops. I had a client who does uh, a $15,000 workshop people fly in and, and she sees them face to face. I have actually two clients in that way. I have clients who taught in the university setting and they're used to a couple of different things. One, they're used to feedback. So hands mm -hmm. just go up in the middle of the lecture and that actually makes for a really good in-person learning experience. But it, if you're used to being able to do that or you're used to being able to seeing someone go like this and go, mm -hmm. okay, wait, I, I see some of you are confused. Let me go back to the drawing board. That will, that will spoil you in, in a good way. Right. But, uh, what I have to do a lot of times is, is do a check-in with them and go, do you feel that that's clear enough for a hundred percent of students? Because it'll be clear for 20% guaranteed, but it has to be clear for a hundred percent. And you'll notice a lot of times I will explain things in two different ways, two different metaphors, two different examples. And that's part of it. So I want to ask you about something actually, now that you mentioned mm -hmm. these things, one thing you're very good at, and I've been sadly absent from it for the longest time now that I think about it, and I guess it's because Facebook has filtered me out of it or whatever, but you have groups that are linked to your yes. courses. And so how does that fit into the curated learning journey? When do you figure that sort of stuff out? How much is it referred to in the yeah. content? What do you do to trigger them over there? And you know, just what's the yeah. place of groups in an online Video yes. So this is part of, I think, what will end up being another episode uh, because we've learned and, and we've spent, we spent five years optimizing our courses to be everything that an online course could be and alluded in earlier on in the episode about that there are some limitations with online courses. One of them is accountability. Uh, mm. we, okay, let me backpedal a little bit. We know that people learn when they have content easy in online courses, easy, too easy almost, but they also need community and accountability, content, community, right. accountability. Now, if you think about it as much as, as we all love to rail on the education system, it does this perfectly content, community, accountability online has not done that yet. So the courses, and if you look at the most successful people like uh, Stu McLaren, right? Doing $5 million launches every year and, and his students get results and get success. He's done that. In fact, that's how do I create the community tribe? Okay. Uh, and the accountability is hard, right? Like you can set up systems, but at the end of the day, people can ignore you and ignore your emails and ignore your course and they can let themselves down as we all have done. Like I've done it too, right? You, take, you enroll in an online course, you take 50% and then you go, okay, I'm going to take a break and implement and then you just never go back. So right. uh, we're working on that from many different angles, including onboarding certified coaches, buddy system, that kind of thing. But uh, 
the community piece, we've discovered that Facebook groups are, are just better for that than the in-course discussion. Because rarely do people read the in-course discussion. Sometimes it's more prominent in other online course platforms, uh, depending on how yours is set up. In ours, people don't really read it. And I think there's value in having people answer one another's questions, not just because maybe the way I'm explaining it is not making sense to the student, which it's having a successful student explain, but also the element of community and people feeling like it, it really is, you know, no one's holding them accountable in the Facebook group, but it really is. They feel empowered because they're part of something. They're part of a group. Right, right. So, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. The, uh, the OCD in me, or the memory expert, depending on how you, how you spin it, wants to just <laughs> these other three things, uh, or four, content delivery and filming. We do it, it you know, in a professional studio setting. Uh, not too much to be said there. Uh, we'll do many more episodes, I'm sure, on filming. Editing and quality control. We have everything edited professionally. And then we do what's called the pedagogical experience design, right? So uh, in the outlining process, hopefully we've already designed worksheets. And in the process of thinking through that outline, you've gone, okay, I'm just making something think. How can I get them to apply it? It's so important that they're applying their learning, right? Information without application can't create transformation. And right. so people have to be doing it. But now it's in the pedagogical experience and nuts and bolts, like, what course software are we going to use? How's the course going to be laid out? Where are people going to get the resources? Uh, are we going to build interactive exercises for them? Uh, branding, colors, all kinds of decisions of like, what's it actually going to feel? And, and I had a, a proud moment a couple of hours ago. You logged into the Branding You Academy at brandingyouacademy.com to make sure that one of our sequences was still working. And you go, God, this is a million dollar experience. <laughs> that's, what you want. that's what you want people to feel. You, you don't want them to spend $1,000 or, or even $200 and go, oh, this kind of feels, and I'm not against WordPress, but it kind of just feels like a WordPress website with a bunch of videos embedded in it. Like you want it to feel yeah. like an online education experience. Uh, and yeah, then absolutely. it's launch and marketing, which, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the hard part. <laughs> From well, we've my been talking about that a lot for sure, but a lot. I'm glad I, I'm glad you raised that point because it reminds me of something I heard from Dan Kennedy a long time ago, and uh, it never harmed me. Uh, and I've done it way more than probably Dan Kennedy ever intended. But he said, mm -hmm. buy your competitor's products, yes. right? And yes. know what that first glance is like that you're going to have going through every step of the purchase, every step of the stick letter, do they even have a stick letter, you know, yes. and is it just a WordPress site or is there any sort of steps to make it transcend that? And I took that to heart and I'm sure it's part of how that I've uh, been able to do what I do. And, you know, it, it's also interesting to go into your own product and look at it fresh after a totally. bit of time, just as I did today with Brand New Academy. And it really yeah, is 100%. A, a million dollar looking product. Even if I my, agree. Uh, and, and Russell Brunson says the same thing, <laughs> you know, after working with Dan Kennedy and being mentored by him. So it's true. I'm guilty that I haven't actually bought my number one competitor's product uh, oh. because it, I just, I, I don't think I could sit through it. I have a, I have, I have it, but I should buy it just to see the marketing funnels. You know, I, I think I no may excuse. know who you're talking about and uh, <laughs> we could, it, it, we could talk off off uh offline yeah. here so to speak and uh maybe trade some stories about that so you don't have to but it's an interesting yeah, experience that. to be sure i'd love that uh anything else that i can share of of value for folks uh, i'd love to hear um i think you know i'm biased but i think the the contents and and just the process that i've laid out here can save people many tens of thousands of dollars uh, in in trial and error and also put a lot more money in their pockets because their courses will be better. And, and I fundamentally believe, I mean, I know, you know, Dan Kennedy has talked about, or was it Dan Kennedy said the product doesn't matter? Uh, That's uh, Keith Cunningham, major Keith, Keith. Cunningham. Right. And, and I, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't, you have that side of the argument, but then you have the other side of the argument that like marketing doesn't stop when, um, when someone buys your product, you know, you need to right. be marketing within your product and, and, impressing upon people. Um, yeah. 
to be fair, Cunningham is not necessarily talking about information products. He's right. talking more at a higher level about buying and acquiring businesses. And you don't necessarily have to be concerned about what the product is when you start or acquire a business. It's so long as you're buying cash flow or you're establishing cash yeah. flow. Yeah. Um, oh, that's but, totally true. Yeah. The product quality matters, I think. Right, right. But he also has something along those lines. I think that one of the cynical things that, that Dan Kennedy has, and he's not wrong, it's not a right or wrong thing, but he often equates information products to gym memberships. And mm -hmm. I, as a university professor, I've walked into a room at the beginning of the year and had 500 people looking at me. And by the end, there were eight. So 80-20 rule does kind of govern all things yeah. in reality, which is what's so impressive about your retention rates with super learner. So, right. You know, and it's not a hundred percent, you know, it's, you can yeah. lead a horse to water, but <clears throat> that's why we're doing coaching programs because for right. people who are really serious and actually want to work with a coach, I've trained coaches on how to keep people accountable and ensure that right. they're moving through the course. Uh, yeah. and, and look, I've also had to come to the realization and, and accept the fact, you know, 27% of books that are purchased, the spine is ever cracked. And right. some people buy a book to say they bought a book and some people buy a book to have the option to read that book later. And the same is true for online courses. I'd love for people right. to do it, but I have to acknowledge, you know, some people buy my course as a backup plan and I have to be okay with that or I, I would lose sleep every night going by selling people stuff they don't need. Well, you know, I, I have six black sweaters and I, one of them I never wear. And I, I'm sure that Zara doesn't feel bad about that. No, and not only that, but it's not up to us to tell other people what they need and when they need it. We're there right. to educate them about the benefits of them investing in themselves and as quickly yeah. as possible. But, you know, we can't yeah. dictate and, when and nor should we. And, you know, it's, um, it's like you do everything you can within reason, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but, but nothing more. You do everything. Right. I mean, I, I continue when people enroll in my courses, I continue to email them and tell them, you know, make some progress and do this. So. I think um, it's incredible what you've done with that. And people should go and get your, at least the free content in your uh, subscription that they are able to do through Super Learner. Likewise, I mean, I'm biased here, but they should get Branding You Academy. And, yep. you know, for a different thing, I mean, I do have a little bit of that WordPress look going on in my free funnel. But you've invested but, in it. Well, it's true. And it does, it does look a little bit better than that. But one of the things that I think is quite interesting about comparing things and, you know, you could just go in any funnel is what I'm saying and, and get mm -hmm. products of whoever is your uh, person. But I think you could do very well by looking at our stuff. What yeah. I'm saying is really study what the heck is going on there. And instead of judging it, you know, ask why and reverse engineer it a little bit and then think, does this work in, in my area? Look at what you've provided here in terms of the guidelines for creating a curated learning journey and really put the time into it, but not just blindly, actually be a bit of a student of courses themselves and how different yeah. people are doing it, both the free and then behind the paywall. You'll learn right. so much, and then you know, hopefully they'll they'll learn from you. And I've upped yeah, my and game a lot it, just watching your stuff. If you're gonna do it, do it right. You know, I've had mm -hmm. people call me, uh, and I won't name names, but like I've had big name people call me and go, "Hey, so and so, another really big name, is flying in town. We had an idea. You know, he's flying in town in in four days. We had an idea to do a course around X." When they say do a course around X, it's like, can you just come with a camera and we'll just shoot the shit for four right. hours and then we'll sell it for $10,000. And right. if you're listening and you, you identify yourself, I love you dearly, but I think <laughs> I, I communicated then and I'll communicate now. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You know, like, again, it's not the information because right. the information is the same as a $7 ebook or right. it's the same as having those two big names do a podcast episode an extended podcast episode. It really is the curation. We spent weeks on the first Branding You, and then we spent the better part of a year on brandingyou.academy yes. just on 
creating those journeys that you're talking about. And yeah. that's where and I that's weeks am full time. apprenticed under you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah weeks <laughs> full time. And, and today my process, uh, when I quote someone out for consulting, it's a minimum two months to build a course and usually right. more like three. It depends how they're writing, you know, how, mm. how quickly they write, but it usually right. is around a three month process. Yeah. And you know, that's a, uh, that's, that's pretty small beans in the scope of a life to invest exactly. that time and just do what you can to, as you say, get yeah. it done so that it is done and it's evergreen to the fullest possible extent. That's right. And, and again, thing. like uh, an unsuccessful course for our business is in the many tens of thousands. A very successful right. course is in the many hundreds of thousands. So three months is not that much, especially because of my time as the thought leader, you know, I uh, take a month of that off for video editing. I'm not involved with that at all. Take uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks of that off for the marketing and sales and promotion. I'm very, you know, so it's really two months, two, a month and a half to two months of my time intensively. But it's not for everyone. Like some people, you know, want to do it fast and dirty. And, and I have nothing against that. You can make a lot of money doing that. I don't believe it's the best, best way to serve your consumer. Right. So of all the things that you know, and all that you've improved over time and noting that it is a process of iterating mm -hmm. and, and noticing what the students do and, you know, answering, if they're asking a question, it's a failure, which I think is a great uh, way of thinking about it, provided you follow up and, and fix it. What is the thing that you know you have to do that, you know, you're most excited about improving next? In my business or in my courses? In the course part of the business, since we're speaking about uh, these yeah, I was going to say course creation we matters. want to do more live experiences um, mm -hmm. because I think there there are some people who need who need the intensity of right. being in person face to face and and doing a workshop. I don't believe you can learn everything I teach in a one day workshop, but I believe I can give just like Tucker Max does a two day workshop on writing a book. You don't write the book in two days, but you give all you get all the fundamentals and then you go home and do it. And I think that's, right. that's what I'd like to do in the online course piece. I think. Um, our challenge is and has always been the marketing, right? I don't profess myself to be a, an online course marketing guru. I've gotten it right a few times really well to the tune of millions of dollars. But what's hard for us is getting multiple working funnels at a given time because we have courses on digital declutter. We have courses on career hacking. We have courses on fitness and health that I've, you know, I've partnered with some top experts. Um, and yet, you know, my marketing team is solely focused on really pushing the memory and learning products. And I think that's the big challenge for us is figuring out models where we have multiple funnels working at different times. And what I learned when I talked with Stu McLaren at LaunchCon, who's like the membership site guy, is he, he kind of gave me my own advice, but helped me realize that my, my advice is so much bigger than I thought, which is if you're going to sell a membership program with access to 15 courses or whatever, you need to create a, a journey through that. You can't just be like, here's 15 courses. So how do you, once you start creating memberships and series of products, how do you curate that journey so that he calls it a success path? I think it's funny. We both came to this almost the same thing, right? Uh, what is the success path through all my different courses? And, you know, we're using technology. Like we have a different interactive quiz tool that people can take like a life assessment and it'll tell them which courses to take. Uh, so figuring that out and, and then building the systems and processes that work, that's a big challenge for us. And, and we're working with consultants all the time to nail that really. Right. That is exciting. Very cool. And, yeah. you know, I like the live events. I've done live events before. And, you know, for people who haven't thought about it, you can record them and turn them into, you know, additional products that might help people. Uh, if they're, you know, not everybody's going to watch recorded live events, but they can be quite useful. Right. And right. yeah, I hope to do live events again soon because another piece of advice, and I never really wanted to do it, but you will also learn so much about helping people by meeting your actual yes fans 100%. and your target market it's just huge what you yourself as a content creator can never perceive until you're in the room with them 100 percent, couldn't agree more so i think that's a that's a pretty good wrap on episode two i would say starting <laughs> out pretty strong hey 
Yeah, I'm having fun. Not to, and, uh, not to toot my own horn, but uh, this has been yeah. a lot of fun. And, and I encourage people, again, check out the free trial of Branding You Academy. Our free trial is more valuable than most people's probably. Uh, Absolutely. I fundamentally believe that to be true. And, um, and it is a free trial completely. No, no strings attached, no credit card required. So head over to brandingyou.academy and just sign up for the trial. Honestly, yeah. uh, if, if it doesn't blow your mind, don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. And while you're here, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed to our channel here. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and where you're at. You know, the more that you put into this, I'm a YouTuber at heart. I never used to be, but I sort of went into it hook, line, and sinker. And now I love YouTube. Hope they don't tear themselves apart, YouTube. But, um, you know, get involved in the conversation. I'll, I'll certainly be uh, poking around and say hello to you. And I, I, I really love being engaged with people. And the more you engage, the more you unlock ideas. And I, I remembered something that I wanted to raise that I heard from Dean Jackson that I remember telling you some time ago, which was that writing is the source of all wealth. And yes. we probably need an episode just about that sentence because there's a lot to it, actually. I'm putting it on the to-do list. <laughs> but I think that that's part of the underlying theme of what you're suggesting here is write your course and it will outline it, write it, and then get it out there. And that's uh, what we've done for you in brandingyou.academy. And so we hope that you will take advantage of the free trial and get subscribed here so that we can supplement that training even more.